So a couple of days ago, we learned that uh, a top flight of athletes here in our sport just got some promotional contracts. Uh, we're not exactly sure the nature of it, but they got some really interesting promotional contracts with a name brand, a name household brand, Gillette, something that you know we've been using probably for years. Obviously, I've been uh, a little limited in my uh, oh, the quarantine <laughs> my beard is strong uh, with you, Jess. <laughs> uh, uh, but but let me let me read the list here. We've got um, look. I mean, who's who of CrossFitters? Matthew Frazier, Cole Sager, Patrick Vellner, Jacob Hepner, Chandler Smith, Noel Olson, Travis Mayer, and Saxon Panchik. Um, a total star-studded roster. Um, I think this is kind of a, another big deal for the sport of CrossFit when you have a household brand entering in, spending real money, and saying. Hey, um, we think that that being involved from an advertising perspective in fitness is a big priority for us. Nikki, you spend your day at working in advertising. Contextualize this a little bit. How big of a deal is this? Yeah, I, I think it's huge. I do. I, I work full time in advertising, and I can tell you firsthand that a name like Gillette, a brand like Gillette, when you say they spend real money, like you could not be more on point. The amount of uh, dollars and hours and teamwork that go into deciding where to spend money on national brands and national campaigns like that would blow your mind. So the fact that it's it's not only sort of promoting health and fitness and wellness in a new way we've never really seen Gillette take before, but also putting eyes on the sport of CrossFit is huge for the brand and for the sport in general. I mean, just think about all the random people who would never, ever otherwise be in our little CrossFit microcosm who are going to see this and all of a sudden be like, oh, damn, because the the captions on the ads even say like, you know, five time CrossFit Games athlete or, or things like that. Like it contextualizes it for people who are absolutely on the for a minute there, you're going to say five time exposure. CrossFit Games champion and you were referring to... Well, uh, it, it says it for all of them. It says it, it says champion. It says, uh, you know, runner up for Noah Olson at the 2019 games. It says that Travis Mayer has been there a bazillion times. Like it says exactly who these people are. It's going to get eyes way outside of our sport and our broadcasts and all of our media. Is it being pushed to audiences outside of crosshairs though? Because for me, I mean, I, I don't have a way of knowing whether I'm being served these sponsored posts because I actually already follow these individuals or because it's being targeted towards me as like the prime demographic of like a dude who yeah. sounds bad. Well, actually, I can shade. shed a little bit of light on that. You know, we, we <laughs> talked to, we talked to the loud and live crew, you know, who, who has a management athlete management side of it and got a little bit of context. You know, what, what they, what they said is, is, is look, fitness and training is really popular. It is a really popular um, topic of conversation. And that is something that's they're planning and they're trying to use these top. I mean, when you think about, well, who are some of the top trainers in the world? You think uh, training athletes in the world, you're like, well, obviously Olympians, we look at them and saying, man, they, they, they're crushing training. They're doing that pretty good. Uh, we've got runners, we have basketball players and other sport athletes, but you look at a guy like Cole Sager. And I think, I don't care if you do CrossFit or not. You're like, yeah, I like what he's doing. It's working. He looks good. He's training hard. Uh, you look at a guy I like Jacob Hepner. I want to smell like him. And you're I like, want <laughs> I want to smell like him and his corgi. And yeah. <laughs> like, but my point is, yes, they said this is this is this is marketing that we are hoping to take to a broader audience and say, look, training is important, and training is something that I think is becoming a really in vogue conversation among advertisers and among brand partners. Yeah. And let me explain something, not to get too nerdy about it, but in terms of uh, targeting, Armin, like you were asking, are, it, am I getting this because I'm just like a dude who's in my 30s or whatever? Or am I getting this because I'm a CrossFit demographic? It doesn't necessarily matter. If they are targeting a wider audience, they'll use an initial ad campaign and a digital strategy to find a group of people that work. So maybe it's CrossFitters and they're clicking on the ads and they're like getting engaged with them all of a sudden they can build an audience that works with the ads with easy targeting. Like we know these people CrossFit, we know these people live in this area or are this age. And then the social media sites that we pour all of our information into can use that data and build a mirrored audience, a lookalike audience 
filled with new people who probably likely will click on the same thing, but we might not have been able to target as easily without. So it's it, these social networks know more about us than we will ever know, and they do not divulge their secrets. More but than more than more than what we know, Armin. I more wanna, than we know about ourselves. I want to yeah, but they you, can use that information to widen their audience I, very well. Armin, I want to ask you because look, you you've seen this this the evolution of the sports it's for 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 a decade now. Um, we've we've got Nike and Reebok sports brands already, so they're not they, they're endemic brands to to this space, but Volkswagen. Gillette, Chipotle, I, I'm seeing I'm seeing a really positive trend here. It is, yep, it's trending in the right direction for sure. Uh, you know, I, I I think so. I remember the first time a non-endemic brand showed up with a big ad spend on a CrossFitter. It was Camille. Uh, just after the 2014 CrossFit Games, it was like probably early in 2015. Red Bull, wasn't it? Uh, it was, I think it was Tide, actually. Oh, right, in Tide. There. I mean, yep. even, even Red Bull, I would count as like sure. an extreme sport, action sport, yeah. you know, like endemic brand, right? So uh, the fact that she was doing sponsored Tide ads, and this was well before the uh, surprise, it's a Tide ad, uh, you know, campaign that they had in the, the Super Bowl uh, commercials in the past couple of years. But, uh, you know, I remember seeing that and thinking to myself, man, I think CrossFit has finally made it. I mean, it, it took... It took us five years since then to get you know any more large brands stepping in, but I think it would be really foolish for anybody to say it's at all negative that we're starting to see these types of big brands step in. The question that I think should be asked from the athlete side is how do you maximize your opportunity to actually step into that playing field? Because you know if you're not top 10 at the CrossFit Games, if you're not already some sort of a household name, you know, developing your space and your brand and your audience to the point where you can fit into one of these, you know, large international companies marketing schemes for like an 18 month long, you know, uh, campaign that they put together. That's going to be a challenge. I think it's it's a, a kind of a, a, a marker of where the entire industry is yeah. for the athletes in general. Yeah, I think it's safe to say absolutely a positive how big of a positive in terms of well does it does it filter down into sponsoring events and things like that does it filter down into um more more athlete sponsorships further down the roster list and how much money does it really bring into the sport i think that remains to be seen but across the board completely a positive and we hope certainly to see this especially a couple of these athletes are more in twilights of their career um you know, a uh, couple of these athletes probably don't have five or six more CrossFit games in them, ex- unless they Ooh. want to, unless they Name want them. to, you Name know, them. get after it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe it. Save that, for a di- save that for a different segment. A <laughs> couple of these athletes probably are finishing up their last couple rounds unless they really want to keep going, but that's neither here nor there. 